Hi. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so I'm gonna be really brief um, because it's far more important that folks have an opportunity to hear from speakers. Um, but I'm delighted and honored to be able to make this presentation for this conference to you. Um, as uh, Greg mentioned, originally this conference was sort of a, a spur of books and browsers, which is focused on the design and sort of future modality of books on a networked and di distributed uh, web environment. And so that conversation will continue uh, Thursday and Friday at the Gray Area Foundation for the Arts in San Francisco. So um, if you are interested in that, there's still time to register, a few seats left for that, so please come on over. Um, for image this location, it was very much an, of interest to me to pursue this path because it was one that I couldn't really pursue in the context of books and browsers. And for me personally, I've always struggled with the sort of conception of what image and what location mean to me as an individual together. It's easy, um, and I'll demonstrate how both together have salience for um, organizations or for the movement of individuals or societies over time and place. But for a while, I really struggled with the idea of what this meant personally until, as um, was mentioned, um, I started getting ready to move to New York. And in fact, I have moved to New York and uh, I have started working at the New York Public Library. And um, it's quite a change and my family is still here. Uh, the idea being that there's a year for me to figure out if this is a smart thing to do in concert with my family. Um, it's great to be back in New York, but it is a momentous thing to do. And when I first came out to New York, um, I have a daughter and she came out with me to help me get settled. And the whole trick of being there is, um, sorry, the mouse here is, oh, okay, hang on. Okay, so this is my kid. Um, so, yay, kid. Um, so the idea of, of the New York experience is that because my family's here, I, I cannot buy a lot of furniture. So um, you're looking at all of my living room furniture um, on the slide in front of you. It's a chair to read or to surf, uh, but primarily to read. And so because my kid was there helping me set my apartment up, this is how I think of my living room with my child in this chair. But in actuality, when I get home at the end of the day, what I see so is this, which is an empty chair. So this is quite a sort of disruption in my mind, right? It's when I get home, this is literally what I see. But in my mind, the way I think about New York and the way that I think about myself in New York is the slide before with my child helping me set up my place. And so for me personally, my apartment, the space that I have in New York is associated with this image that I have of my child there as she's no longer there. And of course she comes back and my family comes back, but that, that initial image of her there helping me set up is so now tightly bound to my understanding and experience of what my life is in New York that I cannot separate them at this point. That seemed really interesting to me. And so it, it seems to me that the stories that we can construct, that we can tell, are in some ways the stories that we can see, regardless of whether or not we're seeing them in our mind or in our eyes. But this imagining of, of imagery and of place really defines stories for us. And of course, one of the things that this conference will explain or, the, or explore are the many different ways that this kind of imagery can can center or substantiate the stories that we tell about ourselves and about the world. Whether they're locations, so this is an early map of the Hudson River Valley, or an actual image of a location, specifically this is the Storm King area on the Hudson, or an imagining of what that scene might look like. It's a very famous mountain or hill depending upon where you're from. And so it was painted quite a bit. 
and of course is widely photographed as well. So everyone on this river at this spot has seen this mound of stone and earth and vegetation and dealt with it, grappled with it, tried to understand it, tried to remember it in some way. Remembering perhaps a vestige of an image long past their own departure. So at NYPL, we also struggle with understanding what image means, more in the context of society and city. And so recently we worked with digitized maps of uh, the uh, inventory of buildings in Manhattan and made an application called Building Inspector that enabled people on a crowdsourcing basis to verify whether or not those buildings still existed given um, a reference to a particular historical area. So in other words, we digitized maps um, across the centuries uh, of the building inventory in the city and, uh, and encouraged people to verify whether those buildings still existed, whether they were retail, uh, commercial, or residential as the uh, timeline transitions. And we're expanding that work, actually. Um, potentially, this is a submission to the Night News Challenge for libraries to create a, an urban data landscape, tying individual stories to place within the city of New York. So this is work that we will pursue, in many ways, an analog of my own individual personal story up on the Hudson, but tied to individual spaces in the city of New York over history as our coast and our buildings and our understanding of our own city have changed. So thank you for joining us here today. The speakers that we have for you will represent our understanding of imagery and location from the micro to a macro level. And I hope that we will all better understand the relevance of this, this synergy between a pictorial understanding of our world, a, an imaging of our world, and of our attempt to understand and construct a story of where we are in that world. So thank you very much.